We have about 15 minutes for, for discussion. I have some specific questions for you, but I'm going to open up. I'm going to ask you one question <coughs> each, and then I'm, I'm, I'm just going to open up the room. I think, of course, all questions are welcome. Please keep them brief. But I think this, this probably also generates generalized ideas, general ideas. And you are very welcome to share reflections. But if you're, if you're asking for, for, to speak and it's not a question, be very, very brief, OK? So we can all talk. All right. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll just, uh, just... My immediate question is, uh, where does the funding come from? Is this, uh, did it start out <laughs> as an arts project? Or, and if it doesn't, uh, how do your funders, uh, how do they feel about this uh, amazing methodology that you have, where you take a lot of time to just like, explore? Um, so at the moment, we're, we've just graduated a month ago, mm -hmm. and it was a self-funded project by the four of us. It was for our degree. Um, we're looking to pursue this notion of combining sensation and shaping it using technology, but um, we're not currently funded by anybody. Okay, in that <laughs> case I should ask, since the world is watching, are you interested in being funded <laughs> by, by uh, someone? Or, or do you want to like, keep, keep your freedom? Um, no, I think we'd be very um, excited to be funded by someone and continuing to work as the, f the four of us, yes. Fantastic. Uh, can you step over here so I can see you both? Yes. Uh, uh, Martin, to you, my, my question is uh, also specific but rather larger, so I'm just going to ask for a very brief answer because I think you always get this question. Yeah, so Memoto and face recognition software, can we just, like, what's up with that? Is that the democratization of a surveillance culture that has already been established? At least we can survey each other back and the authorities as well. Or is this a total lack of privacy being unleashed on the world? Yes, so, so Steve Mann has um, coined the expression surveillance, which is the idea that in an I any surveillance society, the individuals should have the ability and the right to uh, preserve their own version of every situation where they take part. So, because someone in the position of power of having a surveillance device um, can utilize that, that uh, power to their own means. If you live in a school where, um, hopefully not many schools in Sweden do, but some in the US, where they have surveillance cameras, the, the, um, the leadership of that school can, if they choose, uh, probably very easily incriminate you by showing uh, specific parts of their video f surveillance video feeds. And in, in that case, you really should be able to, is Steve Mann's idea, and the idea behind surveillance uh, to keep your own version of, of uh, what, what you experience. I, I think in, in some way the same applies to your technologies, obviously, because it's just a question of choice whether they will record or not. How do you mm -hmm. guys approach, approach the issue of privacy in this, in this context? Um, yeah, I think Martin has an interesting point. You know, it would be it's a scary world if someone could manipulate CCTV footage and twist what actually happened. Um, maybe that's a dark side of what we're saying if you're twisting the what you're actually seeing. Um, but I think, I mean, yeah, it's something to consider. But when whilst we were doing the project, we were sort of looking at it just as a, a novelty and en enhancing your senses, so, yeah, it raises lots of questions. Sure. Does it raise questions with the audience? Who would like to start? Or reflections are welcome to. I have a whole paper full of questions, so it's not going to be quiet. Over there. Hi, my name is Frederick, and uh, from a company called Resultify. Uh, what about the legality of the camera? I mean, can I wear a camera in any situation I want to? Can I film the police when they stop me? Can I wear it uh, to uh, my son's school? Uh, yeah. Are there any rules on that, or it's from country to country? Or? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to fully put in a practical example. I think all of us have walked through security checks and border checks. They always have signs that say no cameras. Yeah. So how do you deal with those yeah, kinds so of there situations? Are, there are actually quite quite good uh, rules and, and you have to look at both the ethical side and the legal side and, um, and in order to get the full picture. So um, as with any camera, you cannot wear Momoto uh, where um, there are signs posted that says that photo photography is disallowed. And 
in, at least in Sweden, it, it's the owner of the property that decides if you can take, take photos or not. And what they can do if you, if you do take photos anyway is that they can ask you to leave the property. They cannot take your camera or, and they, 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 they um, cannot force you to erase the photos in any way. And in you, Sweden? In Sweden, yeah. And, um, and the same law applies to, to the United States, but other laws are in place in other countries. But uh, uh, in any um, case, you need to, to look at the, the both sides of, of, of uh, the legality and the ethicals. Uh, that uh, if, if uh, someone asks me to, to take off the camera because they don't want their photo taken, of course I will uh, remove the camera and we actually made it so that you have to remove the camera in order to stop taking photos because if there was an on off button then other people when it was switched off would still feel uncomfortable so we we designed the camera to care as much about the surroundings as as the user itself but if if someone asks me to not take a photo of them because they're stealing my bike then of course I'm not going to then, then it's my right to take a photo of them because they are committing a crime to which I'm a victim so and, and those are the, like the clear cases, that, and then there's gray zones, and there is a new camera law that in some respects have, have, uh, have, uh, are, are complex, but in some respects are re is really good. So it's now, it's now a criminal offense in Sweden to take, um, take photos that where the intent is to, uh, to uh, um, use uh, the photos, um, it, it's, it's the, where the intent is to use them in, in a krenkande, with, uh, yeah, to harass a person, or in a situation where it's uh, in, a, in, uh, in a public restroom or um, so on. So but, but then if you, use, if you wear a memoto, of course, the intent is never to capture those kinds of things. As somebody who lives in the public eye, yeah. I don't necessarily want you selling pictures of me or indeed some like, real celebrities who actually like, who people would care about you know, to the media. You didn't mean to do that. You just have them on your phone. Why aren't you going to send them to the tabloid? Yeah, so, so if you wear a camera or take a photo uh, with a mobile camera in, in a public toilet, for example, that, that is, you're, you are now, in, by Swedish law, uh, committing a criminal offense, mm -hmm. and that is how it should be. Uh, you, you shouldn't be allowed to do that. And uh, uh, then there's problems with, f uh, for for example, journalists, mm -hmm. where they need to be able to to be able to perform their profession without um, facing prosecution. Mm -hmm. So it's not uh, it's it's a, a issue with different sides to it. Uh, there, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm hearing your responses, but I am really worried. I mean, a sort of an, a listening device like that one, if it was available, like yours, if it was available in, in let's say, as, as, a, as an add-on to my phone or something like that, and then you put that in a high school environment where people are forced to be in the same room, uh, or a prison environment, or any kind of, any kind of thing where, where people are, 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 are uh, doing surveillance on each other, or where there's a power imbalance of any kind, uh, it does get problematic. And, and uh, what it seems to, this suggests to me that we're going to, again, a technological change is going to happen first, and then the whole cultural shift and the ethical discussion is going to happen after. And, and you wouldn't be the first who've, so, who've, who've caused these kinds of situations. It happens with every machine we invent, I think. But, but it's still, uh, I, I I still think we are like maybe a decade behind on the debate in the general public. Yes. Hmm? Over, there's a question over in the back, and then with the one over here. We should have two of these people, and or mics. Hey, yes, Martin, uh, my name is Matt. Uh, y you mentioned you're storing 2,000 photos a day. I was just wondering, uh, sorry if you mentioned this, but is that on the user to store locally? Are you storing it uh, on your servers? And then what kind of storage challenges have you come across storing that many photos? Yeah, so you, you can choose yourself if you, want to, if you want to keep the photos locally on your computer or if you want to upload them to the app. And, and um, the, the major challenge is to make an intelligent choice in, in the compression level of each photo so that we can retain a reasonable storage quantity in, in terms of gigabytes. 
and because just storing the raw data quickly escalates into uh, um, several like terabytes of data per mm -hmm. user per year. So one of our, the core of our business and engineering is to find ways to compress that data without you losing any real information. Very good. Gentleman in the middle here, in the back, and then we have a lady in the front, and then everybody keep your questions and responses brief. Yes, okay, sir. Okay, I'm Fredrik from Tieto. I have a question to you, Martin. It's about uh, open source community. Is that a threat to you, or is that an opportunity to you to open up, for instance, the web uh, server for new apps or things that you haven't thought of but other smart people out there think of? Briefly. Th th that is very much an opportunity for us. It's, it's uh, so important for us to capture all the possibilities involved with uh, looking and learning from your live logging photos. So we are opening up an API that allows you to build apps on top of the platform. Something I should mention is that the, the photos uh, that you take with the Memoto camera are never public by default. It's a very strong principle that we have that it's a, you create a private photo journal and you will have to allow uh, third-party software or our own specific access before anyone can see the photos or share them uh, voluntarily, voluntarily. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Maisa. Um, early on, I think I read on the Memoto fan page, a user who was expressing that her husband had short memory loss and how this could be really helpful for him. Uh, I think sometimes we don't predict the use of a product that it could end up serving another purposes. And for you as well, like how do you both can deal with this uh, extra functionality that comes, which is very positive in your case with the audio for death and Memoto to deal with uh, maybe brain limitations and memory mm -hmm. limitations? Then we're going to go here and then we're going to go there. Yes, you start. start. Yes, yeah, I, I agree. I think it's very interesting how people um, take on products and use them in their own way. Um, we're very much at sort of first stage prototype at the moment. So for us, it'll be very interesting to actually give our devices to some users and get that kind of feedback. But I think there are other things that I would like to test them for myself. So with the hearing device, maybe it could be um, an alternative to medication, perhaps for children with ADHD, helping them concentrate, that kind of thing. So. Yeah. For us, that, that's all about creating a product that is as simple as possible, so that design itself shouldn't dis, uh, uh, suggest any specific use case. Mm -hmm. We create the first version of the product is very, very general and minimal, and then perhaps we can create new versions with more specific use cases. Hi, my name is Fabian Hemmert. I'm from Berlin. And my question is, what do you, from your experience with the Memoto camera, what are the psychological behavioral side effects of being filmed? Yeah, so, so um, thanks to the subtle design of the camera, um, what happens is that people um, see the, seize the camera, and if they know you, they ask about it. If they don't know you, they sort of glance at it and then say nothing. So that's, that, that's what happens, uh, for good or, or for bad. Um, people, it, it's, a, it's a great conversation starter. People can't help to ask about it if it's a social setting. Um, but you very, very quickly, yourself and other people, forget that it is there, also for good and for bad. And so you, the bad is that you, um, uh, you walk into the bathroom and uh, and you and uh, you forget that you have a camera on, <laughs> and uh, hopefully it's just yourself. Uh, otherwise, uh, you need you need to uh, uh, make sure that you don't share those photos to to the world. I also see that this could be integrated with Cindy Gallup's website pretty pretty well <laughs> over there. Okay, my name is Kalle Kostam. I think Pardon? I would love to have this uh, device for logging for myself, as he's mentioned, uh, for keeping it private. What I think about is, is uh, the risk with the NSA and, and the FRA and all that stuff. Uh, uh, how do I, how can I be sure that, that uh, my pictures stay my pictures? Yes, so, so um, uh, with Memoro, your photos are your photos, and as if a governmental, governmental or a court order asks for your photos, we will notify you. Um, but the only way to be really sure uh, is to, to um, 
not identify, to, you, you can be anonymous with, with uh, the Memoto Memoto service. But um, I think uh, with with the turn of recent turn of events, where uh, it's up apparent that at least the U.S. government, but also the Swedish, um, listens into any stream of data they, they would like to and can also in the U.S. issue gag orders on on the companies where they do so, it, it is very problematic and it's something that we really need to um, take seriously when, when sh shaping the strategy of our company. Uh, perhaps we should, should be moving away from cloud storage to our own servers. So we, can, we, we need to be very careful about where we, we place those servers and so on and what kind of encryption we enforce. Thank you. We're running out of time. There are at least two more questions in the audience, so I'm going to ask you guys to drag your feet on the way out of the room so people have an opportunity to catch you. Uh, before we thank the speakers, I'm just going to give you some practical information. Uh, some things are starting now at 6 p.m. The science slam, from uh, which is a sort of... Yeah, it's like a poetry slam, except scientists are like competing in presenting awesome science presentations, which will be fascinating and entertaining. There are people from Lunde Tekniska Högskola. Uh, it, that's going to be in the Snowden Room, starting at 6. Sydsvenskan, the newspaper, is hosting interviews in English, of course, on the stage in the mingling area. I would like to remind you, don't forget to eat. Food is on sale at the venue. You don't need to leave for anything. You can probably sleep right here if you want to. Um, and there are some other things starting at seven, but those are the ones that you need to think about right now. Now, thank you for your attention and your intelligent questions. Millie Clive-Smith and Martin Schellström. Thank you so much.